Welcome back everyone to another one of my Roll20 tutorials. I'll be going over three new things that Roll20 has implemented. First off will be splitting the party. Alright, as you may have noticed, I have a separate window down here. It's down there in the lower right to see basically two windows. One is my player view and the other is my GM view. At the moment they're both the same. But uh, let's get started, shall we? So one of the new features that they did implement in the Rugged Reroll update was splitting the party. To do that, you click on the page toolbar up here that everyone should be now familiar with. So we're going to click on that, see my pages that I have set up, and I'm going to drag this person's avatar, which is my own this time, to one of these, I will do. I'll do choose this one right here. I'll drag and drop and see how this window changed. This character can now only see this window, and he has all control of of that. And the GM can switch over there with him while the, all the other players are on this other page. So now he's, I've got him over there. How the hell do I get him back? It's really simple. Click the page toolbar again. Click on his avatar in the top, um, in the page toolbar area, wherever you dra uh, dragged that person's avatar. See, I can move him all the way back. Well, I'm going to move him not on to this page necessarily, because that means he will be stuck on that page but to the players tab itself. Notice how two yellow lines pop up whenever I hover over it. I'm going to just click right there and now he is grouped with the rest of the players. It's a nifty little tool that you should have various uses for. Alright, I'm going to hide this now. Okay. Now back to the other things. Next up will be the token variables. Now very similar to my macro video and my character sheet getting set up and all that. Um, if you've seen that tutorial then you should be fine with this. So we're going to go back to my old buddy Hawk Bessanoa. Click open the journal tab over here looks like a newspaper. Click on Hawk Bessanoa and his uh, little character sheet will pop up. Well, we want to go to attributes and abilities now and click edit. And we could change just all, all of these, all right, which we will do. We're going to take them away from the macros and just add it to the token variables, which this is not just a player thing. You could do this. Uh, GMs can use it for your enemies. You know, if you have stereotypical Goblin 1, Goblin 2, so on and so forth, um, you could just do that. And that, in, for that reason, um, you could cut down on all the macro tabs down here. And those will go away and only show up when you click on a certain token. Alright, so let's start now. And similar setup, but uh, instead of click show and macro bar, we will uncheck that and click show as token action. Notice how the macro tabs left of it whenever I clicked off of that. It disappeared down here. Alright, and we're going to also at, to do the same thing to this one. Show as token action. Save changes. Okay. Okay, so uh, Matt, what did that do? I don't know. I, well, actually I do know. So I will tell you to click on your character, the token that is assigned to this specific character sheet. And you should already know how to do that. If you don't, I have it in, up in one of my tutorials. So just click on him and now it's up here will save and will save versus fear. 
So we're going to click will save. Still works just fine. I need to change this so it doesn't look like I'm a GM. And we'll say versus fear. That's great. Okay. And really that's that's it. Um, we will click on his character sheet once again so I can show you more in depth. Okay. It's the same thing as macros. Uh, it's exactly the same thing. The only difference is they're not in your macro bar anymore. You can now just do token action. So it's all good. Um, and of course I have it set up for my will like I showed you in the character sheets. Um, and in case you've forgotten how to set up a macro, this is a, a very simple emote and a very simple role. Okay, now that you should have that done, we're just going to hit save changes there and move on. Alright, finally, I will show you how to link up a handout with the characters and or vice versa here all right uh, it's probably more beneficial to click on a character and go to his bio and info edit ah, it's not typing oh there it is okay and we will do this what we have this top plans over here okay in that case we will go hawk or we will type this character has is in possession sorry is in possession of bracket left bracket and type it out how you see it thistle top oops not this oh that's terrible thistle top space plans right bracket all right make sure it has the oops i spelled possession wrong how how terrible of me um, spell exactly like it is over the handouts click save changes alright now in most uh, campaigns you will have a lot more handouts than I do in here so in this case I'm like oh what and they're in possession of this oh and there it goes you just click on it and it links directly to it and I believe the same is reversed hawk Bessanoa oops sorry left bracket hawk capitalize damn you there we go hawk Bessanoa right bracket has this all right save changes and now we will close out Hawk Bessano so we can see that works. And right there. So there you go. That is how you would link the characters to the handouts and vice versa. All right, everybody. That about wraps this up. Yet another one of my Roll20 tutorials. If you have any other suggestions of tutorials that I can do. I will try my hardest to fulfill your wish. If anyone's having some trouble or don't quite understand any of my instructions, just let me know and I'll try to help you out. And if you're having trouble finding a group, uh, the Roll20 forms are a great place to start as well as the Roll20 looking for group subreddit. Alright guys and girls, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day.